Hey there, today I want to show you how to interact between two objects and it will be via C Sharp script here. And what we'll do is I normally like to set up my game objects in hierarchies if there's going to be one that's overseeing the rest. So in this case, I've got my marble and I've got my marble holder, which is the parent of the marble. And there can also be other marbles underneath here. And then I've got two scripts, one called marble and one called marble holder. So if I go in and open these up, so these are my two scripts here. I just pick marble at random, really. It doesn't matter what these two objects are. If they just need to interact, they need to, then they need to interact. So I will start off. So our marble is the one that's going to be receiving the changes, and our marble holder is going to be the one that's grabbing the information from marble, using it, manipulating it however you want. So first off, even though these are linked by a hierarchy, we'll need to kind of get access to each of the information in the two of them. So there's a couple of ways to do this. The first one is we could go in here and we could make a game object and call it, you know, my marble. So this is this game object here. And then when the game starts, we could go game object dot find and then marble. So what this will do is this will go through the scene hierarchy and find this object here and it will assign it to my marble here. Now this works. Yep, it's good for testing, but it's extremely inefficient and I advise against it if possible. Um, another method is show you here. So if we have our marble holder and it's full of an infinite number of marbles, one, ten, thousand, we could make a list of the children here. So our goal here is to get this marble object in our marble holder script. So the another method is you'll have to add an extra using to the top here so we can gain access to so we can gain access to lists. Cool. So here is where we start off declaring our empty list. So list and it'll be of type game object my marbles. So this is an empty list and this will point to you know all of the children here. And at the start, because I don't need this to run every frame, I just need to get my objects at the beginning. So I can do this for each transform. Let me just type it up and then I'll explain it. So what this is saying is for each child transform in the current transform. So our current transform will be the, the transform that this, or well, the game object that this script is attached to. So this script, as you can see here, it's already attached to the marble holder and the marble retrospectively. Cool. So what this would do, it will sort of say for each child transform in the parent transform. So here's the parent transform and here's the children. So there's only one. But then we can just go my marbles, so my list dot add. And then you've noticed that we've got a transform here, but we're making a list of game objects. So we can go child dot game object. And now that will populate our list of game objects. So our list of marbles, my marbles. Just end that there. Cool. So this is another way to get all the marble game objects that we want to use to access. Now this is fine. I'm not going to use this method today because I don't have a thousand marbles. I just have one. But keep that in mind if you want to get a big list of objects that way. So I'm going to do nice and simple public game object my marble. This is just a singular game object here. And if we go to we click back to our scene. Let's wait for that to load. Awesome. So you see here, because I've made this public, it's now open in the inspector here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my marble game object into that slot. So now when I run this script, my marble is going to be this straight away. And it's not as precise as the previous method with the looping through the transforms. But because I know I have a small set number of marbles underneath, 
one to five, maybe maximum, I'm happy to do this and link them together. Now, fortunately, this marble already exists in the scene, so I can just drag it in. If it wasn't going to exist yet, then I could perhaps use the for each method, but I'm going to use this one. Awesome. So, I am now going to give my marble a variable. So we'll have a bool and rolling equals false to start off with. So this is just an attribute or a variable of the marble. So rolling will be what it's doing. And then I'll have an integer which will be, I don't know, the radius of this marble equals 1. Nice and simple. And now, so I want my marble holder to be able to access this information, but I also want my marble holder to be able to access a function inside here so it can do multiple things. It can change the data of the marble, it can read it to use it elsewhere, or it can trigger off functions inside here. So if I'll go and make a function now, and I'll call it uh, just something simple, move and that will bring in let's have a look just a vector 3 movement so, so pretty much what that will do is when this function runs it will take a movement and it will just add it so transform dot position plus equals movement cool so what this will do here is it will add on this movement vector that I've specified to my current position of this marble and this marble will then move right awesome so these two variables here we're not really going to be using them inside any of our code um, I just got a basic function here which will we can show you how to run but these I just want you to be able to access them and then do stuff with them cool so we'll go back to our marble holder we've got our marble however if you look here if I go open up all these windows Right, you can see here, here's my game object, marble, and here's my marble script that's been attached. And here, I now have the reference pointing to this marble, which is great. But however, I can't access this script because this here is a game object, but this here is a C-sharp script. So what I need to do is gain access to this object's here's script. And down here, you can see here are my two scripts. I've got marble and marble holder. Now. You can, because these are objects in themselves, you can kind of think of them as types. That's how I like to think of them. So I'll go in here and I'll say marble my marble script. Now here I have a new object in my code here of type marble. Now this is pointing to this. It's really cool because you can kind of think of scripts like the name of the scripts as objects themselves or types. So that's how I'm using it there. But this is just empty now. So when we start off, we'll have to go inside this reference here to this object and we'll have to grab its script. But it's pretty simple to do. You can just go my marble script equals my marble dot get component of type marble. You can just run that. And I'll only run this once because we don't need to get this marble script every frame. So that's awesome got this here so what I'll do in the update is I'll now go my marble script dot and you can see in here it's called dot move and I will just pass it an arbitrary vector so my movement vector oh sorry I'm declaring it here because it's a local to this function I guess I could put it outside put it up here movement now I do like to have these not declared when they start here and just have them as blank and then here I do them. Just kind of feels like this is tidier and it's more of a list of what I'm going to be using. So in here I will specify my movement vector so it will be a new vector 3 and I'm going to give it just 0 0.100. 0. So it's a really small vector. Now, as you can see here, our move function takes a movement vector. So if we go ahead and plug that in here. Now, this is able to access this because it's a global to the class, which is pretty cool. Now, you can see here, this move function here is actually flagging up 
So if you go inside here, you what you actually have to do is add public in front of this. So it's no longer hidden inside this marble class and it can now be seen from the outside. And there we have it. And similarly, this is the same for if we want to access these two up here. Public bool, public int. Now we can access these two. So say the first one I'm going to print and the second one I'm going to grab from my marble holder script on on every frame. Why not? Okay, so in our marble holder, let's have an int called feedback, which will just be the feedback we get from the marble. Actually, I'll call it I'll call it radius feedback. So now, what I want to happen here is my radius feedback. Let's make this a public so it appears in the inspector, so we can see this constantly change if it's going to. So my radius feedback equals my marble script dot radius. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing this script's radius variable and bringing it in here, which is pretty cool. So we can use it. Cool, so now I've got my radius feedback. I want to print that out. So debug.log. And I'll debug.log that. And then last but not least, I'm going to then go in and manipulate the rolling variable here. So I will go my marble script dot rolling equals true. Kind of, it's arbitrary what you name these, but you can see here I'm telling the marble to move, so why not say the marble's rolling is going to be true. Cool, so here we have the three ways that I'm manipulating this object here via another object or another object script. So the first one is I'm tuning in to this script here and I'm telling one of its functions to run and I'm passing it some information. The second one here is I'm grabbing a variable from this object or script and printing it out, so I'm doing a read. And here I'm actually directly going in and changing one of the variables, so I'm doing a write. So now if I run this, what it will do is it will start up, it will grab my information here, and then on every frame it will move my marble, just grab the radius information, print it out, and set the rolling to true. Now the rolling is false, but it will only it will set it to true once and then it'll pretty much stay as true. But that doesn't matter. It's still demonstrating that a variable is changing. Right, so if we go to our scene now. Oh, and I do apologize, I've missed out F here for floats. Cool. So if we go to our scene now, ready to test this. Now if we look here, we've got radius feedback equals zero, but that's gonna be printing out, so we have this here ready and we've got the marble rolling and radius. Now when I click play, the first thing it should do is move. The second thing it should do is this should be ticked on. And the third thing it should do is print out the radius here. So here we go. So here we have it. We're reading information, writing information, and telling a function to run from one script to the other. Cool, now I hope that will help you guys and I hope I explained it well enough. Here's roughly the script. I will try and find a better way to give you these scripts rather than shoving it into the comments section or just showing you a screenshot. So here's the script. And here's this one. And awesome. I will say goodbye as we watch our marble roll off into the sunset. Thanks for watching.